everyone, welcome back to the Weekly with Activist. It's your host Lydia, and this week we have a video with the Southern Coalition for Social Justice. Um, we interviewed uh, one of their members and got to talk a lot about just, you know, school resource officers, law enforcement, what is the true path forward, you know, and advice for young activists. And so this is a really important and special episode that I am so glad to be able to bring you um, from the Activist Future Series and a big shout out to the Sun Coalition for Social Justice for all of the mentoring work um, that they've been doing with youth activist groups uh, within our area. I'm really sad to hear that Brianna Taylor was denied justice um, just this past week. It's honestly horrible um, what the Attorney General Cameron did and I my heart goes out to anyone in Kentucky and to her family and honestly to everybody who went out to protest today or who was protesting um, in the past week. Uh, we live to fight and there's still just so, so much work to um, be done. And so uh, I did I do want to take a moment to uh, share that with you. I'm always here for any of you guys. If you need me, um, please reach out if you want to talk about that or anything else. So with that being said, I hope that you really enjoy the video and have a great week. Thank you. So hey everyone, welcome back to the Weekly Web Activist. My name is Lydia and today we're here with Marcus Pollard from the Southern Coalition for Social Justice and we're going to be interviewing them on um, their organization and ways that you can help them and then of course learning more about their mission and cause. So Mr. Pollard, if you would just like to introduce yourself and introduce the Southern Coalition for Social Justice. Okay, so hello everyone. Um, thank you Lydia for that introduction. My name is Marcus Pollard. Like you said, I am a staff attorney for the Southern Coalition for Social Justice. Um, here we have three main programs that we work up under. So we have the Voting Rights Team, we have the Justice Social Justice System Reform Team, which I am an attorney for. And then we can have our Youth Justice Pro um, Program that I'm also working with as well. So here at Southern Coalition, we believe in helping out people of color and minorities, disadvantaged people without a voice, help them as far as like their legal help, give them community resources and legal services as well, uh, whether it be through communication, whether it be through legal analysis, or whether it just be through like an advisory or um, assistance. Right, that sounds great. So um, for just like, I guess the um, different boards, could you break them down a little bit and I guess share like what would um, your daily work look like um, in terms of those different sections of the organization? So great, yeah, um, great question. So starting off on the top, our voter rights team is the, um, the I guess the state below Southern Coalition, they've been on the longest. And whenever you hear anything you know, talking about voting rights, or voter discrimination, whatever the big thing about voter ID, or if a person feels that their rights have been taken advantage of as far as they weren't allowed to vote or they have an issue where they're being criminalized for voting. Um, that's when our attorneys take a delegation and take it to court and really get them where they're beyond the district or the Supreme Court level. Uh, the JRSR team or the Justice System Reform team right now, we are working on the, re the, uh, the abolition of police officers in schools. So um, where we have our counselors, not cops campaign, where we're trying to divest from school police officers into more community-based counseling. Um, then we have our youth justice program, where that's mainly just where we're doing youth building there, right? So one instance, we're trying to remove police from schools and make schools safe. For the other instance, we're taking young black youth and teaching them about themselves and doing um, youth building there. So, and that starts up this weekend, actually, with our first That sounds great. So, uh, when did the Southern Coalition for Social Justice form, and could you just talk about um, the founding of your organization? In 2007, when they were founded in North Carolina, and ever since then, they've been branched out across the state, as, um, like I said, with the voter rights um, initiative, and there was beforehand a criminal justice initiative that has shifted into what we call the Justice System Reform Team. So the founding was in 2007. Mm -hmm. 
And so now if you could just talk about um, like how you got into working with the Southern Coalition for Social Justice and why you chose to work with this organization. Um, I was an intern with the Southern Coalition for Social Justice in college when I was in law school. So a little bit about myself, I went to NC State for undergrad, um, got a degree in public relations, communication, and then I went to law school, um, studied there for three years at Central. And on my, in my second year, I, was, I interned at Southern, and I just really wanted to show work with a politically minded um, nonprofit that was doing the community lawyering. So they had both here. They had they worked with politics, they worked with the voter rights, and then they have on the ground activists and on people organizing. So it was just a perfect fit for me. I did that for a year while I was in law school. And then um, I went past the bar. I had a couple of other jobs um, between then and when this position opened back up. I just had to be back with Southern as a family. I've learned all I know as far as social justice and civil rights from the organization. I love it. That's a great story. It's absolutely a great story. Um, I'd like to ask you um, now with um, just the work with youth and um, just more about like the youth programs. Um, how would you suggest youth get involved with the Southern Coalition for Social Justice and um, what type of initiatives? I know the Counselors Not Cops thing is going on with WCBSC, and um, I've seen a couple of other things like that. So if you could just elaborate on that part of the organization. Um, yeah, so the youth are always doing amazing things here in Durham and in Wake County. If you go to our website, you can see all our initiatives on our programs page. And um, in our events page, and we have things that are youth organized by us. We really put it in the youth's hands to establish, you know, they want to do a protest, or they want to talk to their commission, or they want to talk to their school board. We make an avenue for that, but then they drive it home. And we really would really like for you, not us, so as you led, we want the youth to come out, right? So they do the social media campaigns to try to recruit youth to come out to their protest or when we're talking to the school board, we want to pack the building, we want to pack the house with, with young people. So if you go to our website, you can see the events that we have coming up as far as our council, our council campaign and the videos that we're dropping. We're always looking for youth stories. So if you have a story about a police officer that may not be officer friendly in your school, so to speak, and um, you don't feel safe in that environment, or if you have been, I mean, if you ever feel like you've been called out or singled out by a police officer, as a youth in that program, please contact us and I'll contact our youth and work with us. Right, and um, how would you suggest um, youth be like an ally to that cause? Um, maybe if they haven't been personally affected by SROs within their schools, um, how do you how do you suggest like where should they start in terms of allyship and um, working working with their youth peers? Um, reach out to us. So if you are a youth in Durham, reach out to the Youth Justice Project that um, we're working on. Um, work out we is. The youth steering community that I'm over, but it's a youth justice project. Or reach out to um, EJA Education Justice Alliance. They work with the youth in Wade County, and we're really like receptive to just people just pick up the phone and calling us, sending us an email, um, finding us on social media, um, through our websites, and just telling us your story. And we're not a, we're not organizations that you know. We're too busy. We're just your your email is just gonna stay on the back burner, or it's just gonna get lost in the files. No, we will see it. We will contact you, and we will give you that voice. We will connect you with other people like you, and give you you know a pathway for it. If you want to be an advocate, we will um, allow you to be an advocate. We will encourage you to be an advocate. Right, exactly. That sounds great. And just um, going off of that venue, uh, what? Do you wish you had known, like, when you started working with the Southern Coalition for Social Justice and maybe what advice do you have for youth activists that are finding their voices during this time? Um, one thing I wish I would have known before I started working with Southern, that's a good question because, I mean, I learned so much, especially when I was in our law school, right, um, that the Southern Coalition taught me with their, their racial equity trainings that they do with their employees each year. But I just wish I would know the history behind the policing of African Americans. Right? As an African American, you always feel like something's different. You always feel 
like something's off. Um, but once she knows, oh, it's like, okay, I'm not crazy. This is what's happening. This is why I got pulled over when that other person didn't get pulled over. More African Americans, you know, would have more police interactions than the average person. And this isn't normal. So once you real, once you get outside your own bubble and realize, all right, this is a history of systematic racism that's been going on in this country for a really, really long time, then you can really start to move forward with a change. So um, as a black man growing up in the South my entire life, like I said, I've always knew something was off, but once I really equipped myself with that knowledge and that power, I was able to move forward to organize and advocating for a change. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that um, education and history is really important. Um, where would you suggest, I guess, for people who haven't had a lot of um, history exposure, especially in terms of policing, where would you suggest they start in terms of really educating themselves about that issue? Link up with your local organizers, right? So, and Durham, there are a lot of organizers here, and you could just start with the Southern Coalition, not to just plug, you know, our organization, but it start here. We have a bunch of events, webinars, um, because of COVID, of course, we can't really meet in person, but we could, we'll be doing that as well. So we do have events where we try to educate the public. We have events, we try to educate people. So I would just say, just link up with, just if, if, if you just have to do a Google search, really on um, people in your local area who are who are doing the movement, who are boots on the ground, and just follow them, you know, whether they tweet or um, videos they put up and follow their events, and slowly you'll get more integrated into that area of life. And um, you certain names will be thrown out, and you know that should spark the curiosity to do some research. So, looking forward, what are the goals for Southern Coalition for Social Justice this year? Um, what are you guys hoping to accomplish? Uh, with the youth or within the other uh, branches of the organization? Um, okay, so I dream big. My um, chief attorney, um, my chief counsel, he may not want me to say this, but I mean, our goal is to abolish police officers in the school. We know that that's not like a, something that's not going to happen by the end of the year, especially with, um, especially with people. Um, you know, we're students not in school right now, but that's mm -hmm. our short term, long term. That is our goal to abolish SROs in school. We make um, no ill things for us about it, right? And we want to defund the police officers. So um, that is our goal. What was your other question, also? Um, and just for the youth, in terms of what you uh, hope to see them accomplish this year as well? I want to see the youth take initiative in their own fight. Um, what we're doing now, we're taking steps to educate the youth, um, teaching them things that I didn't know when I was in high school, that I wish I would know when I was in high school, and making them more self-aware of their environment, making them more, um, teaching them how to think critically. And if we can get them to take the information that we're giving them and internalize it and make it their own, and, you know, go out and, you know, like I said, participate in their own freedom, their own fight for justice, then that'd be a success. If I can get them to say what I'm, what I'm giving them, think critically about it, and then actualize it in a way that is that proceeds that, that, that proceeds towards change, then that'd be a success for me. Right, that makes sense. Uh, how do you suggest? In terms of, um, I know a lot of youth activists were working outside of school um, over the summer in terms of personal organizations and stuff. How, um, how would you suggest like integrating that activism into schools and what avenues would you say for like getting your school community involved or working in a school space in activism? Um, it's tricky when you're working inside of a school because um, you do have pushback, right? No, I, if, you're, if you're talking against school policies, the school is not necessarily be, you know, necessarily happy with that. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the best avenue is to get with um, adults who 
can talk to their adults or kids who can facilitate a um, a conversation with the school administration. Because um, one thing that we do, we will go into a school with students. We will have um, conversations with the principal, with the school board, so that we, so that no one the student won't be intimidated by what they're trying to do, right? So we don't want students to be afraid to speak up. And we want to make sure that students have rights, because students do have rights. We want to make sure those are protected. And then after we have that conversation, after we, so to speak, negotiate with um, the school administration, the school board, then you can start, you know, working within those conversations in your school. But um, like I said, it is a difficult situation when you are um, trying as a student to fight the system within the system. Mm-hmm. So if you can get with um, local organizations like Southern, because we do have attorneys um, like EJA, because they do have organizers who have been doing this for a long time inside schools and outside schools. And um, or just a teacher um, who may be sympathetic to the cause, a counselor who may be sympathetic to the cause, and and establish that working agreement because it can have some backlash if you haven't um, discussed it with the administration. Right, and that's really good advice, especially with new clubs starting up this year and everything. So thank you for that. I think um, I glossed over the fact, but just. Um, I guess, why does Southern want to um, abolish police from schools, you know, and if you could just give like a short overview, you know, of what, of what, of what, what are the reasons behind that? Yeah, I'm, so, I'm along with it. I'm a lawyer, that's what I did. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so a short answer, I probably want to abolish students from school because every student matters, every single student matters, and we want to make sure that every student has an environment where they feel safe to learn. I don't want to have students not um, go to the next grade, not graduate, not go to college because they didn't have an environment where they could learn or they were funneled from school to prison because of SROs and being singled out. So, so long answer short, I don't want students not to be successful because of outside reasons. If you're not successful, I want to be because you didn't do the work and that and it was something that you just didn't want to do. But if you want to be successful, you should have the opportunity to be successful. Um, and what would you say to maybe, I know um, usually when some people who may not know a lot about the cause when they think uh, defunding the police, they're like, who is going to stop school fights or drugs or school shootings or any of that? Like, what would you um, say to that? And what would, I guess, uh, if you could just elaborate and really what that defunding means and what else would be in play with with that um, route? No, I love that question. Um, so just to, I guess, attack it first, um, who would stop the fights or school shootings or anything like that um cops are reactionary right police are reactionary they react to something they don't stop anything they just react to it after we have a victim after we have a put on full perpetrator and they arrest and take whoever to safety right so we know from studies and analysis that we've done that teachers know our counselors know beforehand what students are having issues, what students are being picked on, what students, you know, need more attention. They just can't give them that attention. So students act out before things happen, right? And um, very rarely do you see a student who just one day is great, you know, straight A student and, and the next day they're, you know, suspended for drugs or suspended for fights or anything like that. So we can get counselors in schools to work with the students who are at risk of being suspended, at risk of being um, expelled, then that will cut down on quote-unquote crime in school, right? We don't really call it crime, but just violations of the student handbook, right? So, like I said, police officers react to that stuff, but they don't prevent anything. Um, And when when we say, oh, defund, it just isn't defund. We, we, uh, the defund makes the headlines, right? It's, It's a pretty headline. However, we operate on the um, divest and invest, right? So let's take 
running away. If you're giving millions upon millions of dollars to police officers for their salary, for their cars, for equipment, um, surveillance equipment, S, Y, and Z, take that away. Just take it away, period. And then let's give more money, let's invest more money into things that will prevent school, um, fight school. Uh, let's, let's, let's put uh, individuals in there, such as police builders, is one three part one. Um, profession that we advocate, people who are trained psychologists, people who are trained counselors that can work with you who are troubled, um, and actually build that relationship. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, so that's, um, thank you for that answer, and I think that really goes to show that, you know, defunding is just the beginning, you know, like there's so much, so much around that, so much after that, that um, we're still fighting for. Um, well, those are all of my questions. Thank you so much for being here. Um, we really appreciate your insight and um, I'll definitely link um, all of the social medias and websites and everything um, within the video uh, so that those resources are available. So thank you. Thank you so thank you for all you do. So you have reached the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I will link everything in the description below. So really do, you know, engage with that further reading with the resources that um, I provide to make sure that you're staying up to date uh, with the Southern Coalition for Social Justice and uh, just make sure that you're staying active in your community. Um, this was part of the activist feature series. I have an entire playlist of all of the groups that I've interviewed so far. Please recommend me any new ones that you would like to see come on the channel. And I'd also want to tell you, big surprise, we are having a Q&A session next week, next Sunday, along with our election video. There will be um, a video talking about politics and activism, uh, focusing around the presidential election, coming out next week, next Sunday. And we will be having a Q&A um, that week as well to just discuss that video and any of the other videos that you've watched. Hopefully uh, I'll be able to use this opportunity to get valuable feedback from you guys on the quality and content of my videos but then also just talk about everything that's going on because I really feel like there needs to be a space created for just with all of the chaos, all of the injustice going on for activists to come together and you know not only strategize and think but feel and discuss and so I really want to um, provide a little bit of that platform uh, next week, and I'm really looking forward to that conversation. So make sure to tune in to the Politics and Activism video that's coming out next Sunday, and join the Q&A that will be starting that hour. And so Q&A will run from 12 to 1, 12 to 1.15, uh, give you time to watch the video, it comes out at 12, and um, just come hang out with me. Okay, so... So excited for that, so excited to see you guys, and I really hope that you continue to be weekly web activists, continue to include activism in your everyday lives, and understand that even though the struggle is hard, you know, that's what makes the struggle worth fighting. Um, and I really hope that with everything going on, that you guys have support systems, take care of yourself, your mental and physical health. Is extremely important uh, and it helps you become a better activist you can't be an activist if you know you're sick in bed or you're not feeling well you got to take care of yourself so make sure that you take care of yourself and make sure that you stay involved in activism thank you so much